Hey toy fans, welcome back to the Spectra Creative channel, a channel dedicated to exploring and answering questions about the toy industry. From me, Scott, Toy Guru Nightlet. I'm a collector, but I've also worked in the industry for over 20 years, and I often get asked questions about the toy industry. In particular, I actually recently got asked a question by a personal friend of mine, John, who is the uh, creator of an epilepsy awareness comic called Tote Man. You should check it out, especially if uh, you're interested in teaching kids about epilepsy. It's a great tool for doing so because, you know, the power of comic books. So John asked me a week or so ago about why Walmart specifically gets kind of first dibs and or exclusive dibs on collector product, like the Masters of the Universe Origin line, which is, it's 2020, it's actually September 2020, when I'm recording this video, and currently this line is exclusive to Walmart. I know there's plans, I think, to expand it to other retailers in 2021. They also have things like the uh, Real Ghostbusters retro line, which is kind of a similar thing. A, a reproduction or a reimagining, well, actually these are more reproductions versus reimagining of vintage 80s toys that we all collected. And it's great that they're at Walmart, but some of the cons that show up online that get discussed and shared is, one, that the figures don't always show up to shelf in the greatest condition, and or when they're shipped by, say, Walmart.com, they don't always show up at your doorstep in the greatest condition like the way a company like Entertainment Earth that specializes in mint condition shipping does. Or the other complaint that you go to your local Walmart that's supposed to have the exclusive access to this product, and you can't even find it. It's not on shelf. Sometimes there's empty displays that look like it should carry this product. Sometimes there's just pegs, but the pegs are empty, or they only have one figure dangling. And... What we really, you know, what people want is something like this, where you can just go in and you've got full shelves and access to every figure. And, you know, if, if a store is going to get the exclusivity of a line, shouldn't they be stocking it in full? Don't they want to make money? You know, why would they want empty pegs? It's not going to make money for them, right? If, if you know, whether it's a collector or a kid or a gift giver, whoever goes in to buy it, if you can't buy it, if it's not there, no one wins, right? The retailer's not winning because the real estate that they've given this product isn't making the amount of turns to justify the square footage in the aisle. And the purchaser, whether it's a gift giver, a kid, a mom, dad, grandma, or the adult collector, like probably the people watching this video are, you're not getting your, you know, precious, precious, awesome action figures. Now, one thing to address about this before we do a deeper dive into why Walmart gets lines like this is sometimes it just takes time. You know, after a while, this is a picture I took of the Ghostbuster figures at my local Walmart, and they did show up. I've seen them multiple times, sometimes with patience and waiting, which I know as adult collectors, we do not have that, myself included. But you know, not that I like to use lots of videos of uh, ant dead animals and stuff, but it, it's a good metaphor. We are. We're like vultures. We want the first pick of the kill. We want, you know, the, the very first day that the, the aisle is reset, we want to be there to get the figures. And a good example of that is right now, September 2020, there's a new wave of Spider-Man Marvel Legends and Deadpool Marvel Legends out. And at my local, I think this is Target, not Walmart, um, but, you know, these figures are, have now become peg warmers. It's Daredevil and Peter Parker there just sitting, and they've been sitting for weeks. And that's because collectors have, if you will, already picked them over, hence the, the vulture image there. Or again, the same thing with Deadpool, Marvel Legends. It's a hot new wave. Once collectors, the local collectors, have swept in and sort of gotten their fill, now they're just leaving them on the pegs. So who is going to buy these on the pegs after collectors have swept in? And the answer, not surprisingly, is children. Or more so moms, dads, grandparents, aunts, uncles, gift givers. That's who's buying the bulk of these toys. Yes, collectors want first dibs. We want to get there, swoop in, get our new Marvel Legends, get our Motu Origins figures. But once we've had our pick and our fill 
and we've gotten them first, which, hey, I'm all for that. I, have, I don't have the patience either while waiting. Uh, you know, I've, I've sit there tracking my figures and watching them go from state to state. The toy aisles, despite our passion and, and extreme, you know, I guess, well, you know, just love of toys, these aisles are not designed for us, the collectors. They're just not, as far as sales. I mean, it's great when we come in and we buy toys, whether it's a collector toy or a kid toy, but, you know, or we're buying a toy for ourselves. But, you know, like this guy, your Hot Wheels collector here, if the toy aisle was just catering to him, it would never make enough money to justify the real estate in the aisle. That's why the bulk of Hot Wheels sales have to be to kids. And it's no different for action figures. If it's going to be a collector-only figure, you're going to have to travel through the entertainment area, wind your way behind the televisions, behind the DVDs and the books and, and everything else that's there, and Walmart and Target have space, not in the toy aisle, but all the way against the back wall for collector-specific product. This area of the store doesn't require as many, if you will, turns, as many purchases to justify the floor space. So that's where collector-only product goes. If you look at you know, some of the other stores like Amazon's and your, your Big Bad Toy Stores and your Dorkside Toys and your Entertainment Earths, even if all of these guys came together, at the end of the day, they don't have the purchasing power of Walmart. So going back to the original question, now that we've established the bulk of toys are selling to children, and they need to in order to get aisle space, it all comes down to what's called MOQ, and how Walmart, and not even you know a grouping of some of these smaller retailers or online retailers, can do what Walmart does, which is why Walmart gets access to lines like this. So MOQ, as I've explained in a few other videos, is called minimum order quantity. And it's the minimum order a factory will accept in order to go into production. So your factory, your toy factory, is going to have a injection molding machine for plastic like this. And this machine can make a lot of different consumer products. Yes, it can make an awesome action figure, whether it goes to an adult collector or a kid or, you know, sits on the shelf. It's still made by an injection molding machine. Molding machine. But that injected, injected molding machine can also make this, a non-articulated plastic bowl. And guess what? If I'm the owner of a factory, I would much rather have an order for this than an action figure. These are easier to make. They require less parts, less labor. And I'm going to get a much higher order. I'm going to get way beyond my MOQ. My minimum order might be 5,000 or 10,000 units per item. But for a bowl, I might get an order for 200,000 units or a million units. So I'd much rather make this than make an action figure that's going to have 5,000 or 10,000 or it'd be awesome 20 to 50,000. So that's where MOQ comes into play is that the, the, the factories that make action figures also make bowls and, and plastic cups and baby bottles. So when you see things like this, you know, damaged product of, of what should be, you know, what we consider adult collector product showing up at Walmart, the two reality checks are, one, this is not collector product. At the end of the day, this is kid product. If it's at mass retail, unless it's on that back wall, if it's in the main aisle, 80% of the sales need to go to kids. Yes, collectors are going to get the first 20%, and they're going to, you know, like vultures, they're going to come in. I'm one of them too. I'm calling myself a vulture. They're going to sweep into Walmart, and they're going to get the figures first. And Walmart's purchasing power, because they have so many locations around the country, that's what lets them hit the MOQ. So kind of the conclusion is you could have nothing or something. If Walmart didn't take Motu Origins or Ghostbuster Classics or the vintage Ghostbusters, they wouldn't exist. The other store co companies don't have enough buying power to make toys happen. I mean, yes, you can get you know a shared exclusive like Kingpin here, but he's a repaint. There's a big difference between a fully tooled figure and a repaint, and I'm talking from a cost standpoint. Tools cost anywhere from twenty to hundred thousand dollars to make. So all of those Motu Classics and Ghostbuster figures showing up at Walmart are because Walmart has the buying power to do this. Even, you know, 
Again, all these small companies coming together and joining forces and forming one giant buying group. Well, you can get a kingpin, you can get a reprint paint, but you can't, they don't have enough buying power for a fully tooled figure. So the idea of kind of being grateful and happy for what we get, that's kind of where it comes from. I mean, you've got things like HasLab and you've got, you know, the now defunct Maddie Collector that sold toys directly to collectors and bypassed retail. And that's a great part of the industry for addressing collector only product. But for retail, you know, we don't like to see kind of how the sausage is made, how the, how the action figure is made. But at the end of the day, it comes down to MOQ and it comes down to the fact that stores like Target or Walmart are big enough that they can put in a big enough order to justify the tooling. They're not experts in, you know, shipping or adult collector in general, the way, you know, a Big Bad Toy Store or an Entertainment Earth or Amazon or other online retailers are. And that's not what toy companies are looking for. They're not looking for someone who's an expert at this. They're looking for someone who can move a lot of units. And the most number of units that are going to get moved are units being sold to kids. And that's what Walmart and Target are really good at because they get a lot of foot traffic and they can handle the MOQ. So pretty much in conclusion, why does Walmart get what we perceive as collector product? It's because they can handle the MOQ. They can you know, sell the, the amount of product. And if they didn't take it, if Walmart didn't step up and take Motu Origins, Motu Origins probably wouldn't exist. So it's kind of like you can either not have Motu Origins or you could have it distributed through Walmart. I hope this answered questions you guys have about why big retailers get exclusive lines. If you have other questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, give me a like. I'd appreciate it. I'll see you guys around the internet for more toy information from Spectra Creative.